Hi students, I'm Dr. Siddharth Sethi and over the last few weeks I've got many queries from all of you that now that you've got a PG seat in the counseling, now what next? Is it just about passing the MD or the diploma? And over the next few minutes I'll be talking with special reference to pediatrics. What next? What to do in these next two or three years of your post graduation? Would you be working more? or do you need to read more to pass your post-graduation? What about thesis, books to read, whether you need to do some research, how do you pass the exam, and what next after the PG? So first of all, I'll be talking to you about what you should be doing in the next two to three years and how to work. And I would suggest that all you need to do is to have a case-oriented approach. So whenever you see a child or a patient, all of you just think, can we do something more for this patient? This is how I used to think. Suppose your consultant, your assistant professor, your professor has already told what to be given to this child. Think about, can we do something more? Can we do some more tests for this child? I'll give you an example. Uh, I was at All India Institute and we saw a child with hemolytic uremic syndrome way back in 2006 and we just thought can we do something more for this child and it's almost 10 years back i collaborated with a lady in france you know all of us have emails and google and i emailed with this lady and we collaborated with her and we found that child had anti-factor h antibodies and we could treat that child by plasmapheresis and that's history now over the last 10 years now India the most common cause of HUS hemolytic uremic syndrome in India is anti-factor H antibodies because we thought about it so think more about these patients I can give you more examples in my uh, era of consultancy in private practice I have seen many children who could not get kidney transplants because there was no blood group compatibility so we thought about blood group incompatibility and doing transplants in children without even if they don't have a blood group compatible donor by plasma pheresis so we have done many transplants in this era so think about what you can do more for this child when you will read more you will find more about that patient you need to think about what long cases and short cases would be coming in your exam so i would suggest all of you in your study room make folders make a folder for cardiology make a folder for nephrology neontology and in that folder write and keep some good reviews so whatever you find please print that if you find a good review print that keep that in that folder Write whenever you see a patient what positive points you need to look at suppose you need to suppose you see a child with congenital heart disease How would you look at that murmur? How would you auscultate that murmur? What negative history you need to have in that patient? What things to look for in that patient? So keep that in that folder So all of you know what long cases short cases would come in your exam. So keep that in your folder now for any specialty there is always a national society now in Indian pediatrics we have Indian Academy of Pediatrics so I would refer all of you to this website IndianPediatrics.net and please read the issues every month there is a very good review article in this journal look at last three years you'll find excellent review articles so please read those articles and these are the reference articles which you can use and quote in your exam Please look at PCNA. These are the pediatric clinics of North America. Every issue has a theme. And just look at last three years or five years of PCNA. Like the current issue has a theme on autism. So if you just look at these papers, you'll get very good updated information. So it's not just about books. It's about journals. So all of this is available on the web. So just look at PCNA. So how do you look for a review? So all of you, whenever you go to pubmed.gov, just write the paper, whatever you want to read on. Suppose you want to read on RDS 
on the left side click review you will find excellent reviews and most of them are open access so please read good reviews and please 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 print them don't think that on your ipad you can keep everything if you print them keep them in the folder the night before exam you can open and look look at which long case of say tubercular meningitis i need to read on and you'll be able to access that easily one day before exam that's very important now coming to your thesis what topic to choose of course the topic of the thesis depends on your guide whether he's a neontologist or a nephrologist or a neurologist but again use the same strategy look for go to whatever topic he gives you or you think of on the left look at the clinical trials this time so look at clinical trials randomized trials done on that topic and think of a good topic and present to your guide and then he'll suggest you what thesis should be written on think of a good novel thesis but don't i would suggest don't go for big randomized trials only do a small observational study because it is easy to do just say observational studies say what is the incidence of say hypomagnesemia in icu what is the incidence of say death in renal failure so simple things first don't go for rcts it will be difficult now there are so many books to read now which book to read in pediatrics so i would suggest in addition to reviews these are the two main textbooks which you need to have in print not a pdf guys nelson's textbook and ghai so whenever you look at a patient please at least read those points that topic from these two books that's the most important part op ghai is a very well made book i was a part of op ghai textbook since ages now so almost 10 years back when op ghai was revised i wrote this chapter on common medical procedures now i have moved on to prior practice so i am not a part of op ghai textbook anymore but it's an excellent book so please read that whenever you read anything now remember that now we have societies we have indian society of pediatric nephrology i am the secretary of that society even pediatric gastroenterology cardiology so now we have position papers on multiple things like for pediatric nephrology if you just go on the indian pediatrics you'll find we have a guideline on enuresis we have a guideline on hypertension uti so read latest guidelines by respective societies whether you go for pediatrics or obs and gynae look at the recent guidelines these papers are freely available on the web and you need to quote them now whenever you will be sitting in the opd seeing a child you need to have a book on drug doses in children which is a very important book written by the head of department of all india institute then you also need to know how to examine a child so all of you would need a very good book especially like a book from dr mehrban singh on clinical methods it gives excellent way how to examine a child how to go about looking at every system in a child so it's a, it's a very good book for clinical examination now whenever you are in night duty guys you should have the harriet lane handbook with you this book has everything you need whenever you are in night duty whenever you see a child with dehydration hyponatremic dehydration hyponatremic dehydration shock this book will give you all the important information and this book should be your companion i do remember when i was a pg at night in the emergencies i used to keep keep this indian academy of pediatrics textbook of emergencies so whenever you are there in your night duty you, you you might see a child with snake bite you might see a child with diabetic ketoacidosis and i remember i used to see all of these children using a, a textbook on pediatric emergencies and it's been ages now and i am a part of this iap textbook now i edited the whole kidney section of this book and with all of my colleagues from across the country and us so please look at the indian academy of pediatrics textbook of pediatric emergencies edited by our ex president of indian academy of pediatrics dr sadosh sorens when whenever you go to niku 
your help would be Glohati Manual of Neonatal Care and also by the recent AIMS protocols in Neontology edited by the head of department of Wallinia Institute. Whenever you are in the PICU, also look at we have written now a guidelines by the P pediatric CRRT group uh, it was written by me and my colleagues this book is on critical care pediatric nephrology and dialysis this book will help you in your pediatric ICU whenever you see a sick child with acute kidney injury this book has been edited by me with my colleagues from US Dr. Bunchman who invented the dialysis in children in US almost 30 years back with my friends from Cape Town and Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Anna. Now, do you really need to think about research in your post-graduation? Again, I would say think of something new. If you can find something new for this child, whether you can do something new for this child, I'll give you an example. Way back in 2006, I was a first year PG. In, uh, I would, I'm sorry, in 2003, I was a first year PG. And my guide said, Siddharth, uh, I have a patient. He looks odd. Why don't you see and tell us what's the diagnosis? And I look at a child and found that he looked more like a kabuki. In Japanese, in Japanese uh, dance, what, the, what happens is that the males, they dress up like females. And there's a kabuki dance, which is very famous. And that was my first publication in 2006 on a child with Kabuki syndrome and a diaphragmatic defect. That was just the first paper I had and it was my prized possession in 2006. And now things have changed. If you go on the PubMed, you'll find I am reaching now almost 100 publications. And it helps you to understand more. So if, if possible, do some research, try to publish that. You'll feel nice when you see your name on the PubMed. Now, do you need to do more specialization? Is this an era of super specialization? So it will be good if during your PG, you keep preparing for some fellowships. There are a lot of fellowships in neontology in every specialty of pediatrics these days. But I would suggest all of you to prepare for FNB or DNB. It's an exam by the national board. And now there are fellowships and two-year and three-year DNB, which is available in almost all specialties of pediatrics. You can prepare for DM. MRCPCH would be feasible for all of you. It's very easy. It's just an exam which you need to give along with your MD or DCH exam. All they need is some simple exams on MCQs and then there's a clinical exam. So I would expect all of you to be MD MRCPCH or DCH MRCPCH by the time you clear your exam. So please fill up these exams. These are conducted in India. So you don't need to go to London for that. MRCPCH is conducted in India these days. And this year it was planned to be in Kolkata. Most of the times it's in Delhi, but this year it was planned to be in Kolkata. So do think of becoming a MRCPCH or doing going for a fellowship later on it's not that difficult these days and it will give you an edge over other pediatricians that was all from my side whatever I think about whenever I need to whenever I see a young PG what advice I need to give that's me Dr. Siddharth Sethi signing off I'm available on the email if you have any doubts my email is sidsdoc at gmail.com I'm a pediatric nephrologist and a pediatric kidney transplant physician by my profession. Thank you.